as a rule of thumb, it is the minimum amount of magnification that is required to perform a task fluently. That's the magnification that's prescribed. If we increase the magnification further, it's important to note that this will reduce the field of view and will also make the magnifier quite hard to use. There are four ways in which to enlarge an image. The first is relative distance magnification. This magnification is created by moving the object or the image closer to the eye. This includes strategies such as sitting closer to the television or using optical aids to move the image closer to the eye. The result of reducing the object viewing distance is to increase the angular subtense of the object at the pupil entrance. An object at an initial reference working distance of 40 centimetres produces a retinal image twice as large when viewed at 20 centimetres. A presbyopic eye would require an optical aid to view the object at 20 centimetres. The second type of magnification is relative size enlargement. This type of magnification is achieved by increasing the size of the object while the working distance remains the same. Examples of this would be large print books, larger TV screens, text enlargement such as zoom text or windows magnifier. Measurement is by direct scale comparison. A bank statement that is normally printed in N12, if generated in N24, would represent relative size enlargement of 24 over 12, which is two times. The third type of magnification is electronic enlargement. This type of enlargement is achieved by projecting or electronically changing an image to increase the angular subtense at the eye. An example of this would be CCTV. The magnification is measured directly by comparing the new height of the image with the original height of the object. Advantages of this type would be the ability to magnify at a normal working distance, which helps patients that struggle to cope with shorter working distances, as well as allowing a large range of magnification, suitable for patients with progressive or variable sight loss. It has the added advantage that it can be used to enhance contrast. The final type of magnification is called angular enlargement. This is the ratio of the angle subtended by the image through a telescopic aid compared to its subtents viewed directly. Using a telescopic aid enables this to be achieved without a change of the vergence of light, which enables image magnification at long distances. Of course, these types of magnification can be combined. For instance, a telescope with a plus near cap combines angular enlargement with relative distance enlargement. So there are several methods used to predict the likely magnification needed for a task. An alternative way of thinking of this is that, for instance, N18 is times 3 the size of N6, so you would need times 3 magnification to spot read N6. For example, a person who wants to read a newspaper print size of N8 at 25 centimetres, but can only manage N16 with a plus 4 add at 25 centimetres, then the magnification required would be 16 over 8 or 2 times. This would in theory just about enable him to see N8, but it is important to remember that fluent reading would not be possible and an acuity reserve of at least times 2 should be allowed, therefore times 4 might be more appropriate. We work out magnification based on a plus 4 lens giving unit magnification at 25 centimetres. The magnification of a device is considered to be F over 4, where F is the power in diopters, assuming a viewing distance of 25 centimetres. It should be noted that some manufacturers mark their devices using the formula F over 4 plus 1, which can be confusing, and so we tend simply to refer to the dioptric values. So at this point we should mention high ads. These are strong reading spectacles that enable the object to be viewed at a shorter working distance and with the resulting magnifying effect. It should be noted that while the high-powered lenses give magnification, they get progressively harder to use due to the convergence required. In order to resolve this, base in prism is often used and sometimes one lens is frosted so that the spectacles can be used monocularly. Some may dislike the short working distance but others prefer that it is a hands-free device. 